Hello, and welcome to Fairview Baptist Church. I'm Pastor John Boyacek. I'm so glad you could join us in worship today. I trust that you will be blessed. In a few moments, you're going to give a, we're going to give you a, an opportunity to share a few things about what you're thankful for, but I thought I'd get things started about why we should be thankful. Uh, but I want to start off with this. Uh, boys and girls, those of you who are 12 and under, how many of you have bicycles? Okay. A few of you. Yeah, a few of you. I don't know if you can relate to the story that I'm about to tell you, but when, when, I, when I was a boy, about 10 years old, I used to hang out with my friends on, in my neighborhood. This isn't a picture of us, no, uh, but kind of like this. I don't have a picture of us. And, and we used to bike up and down our street. We loved biking. And it was just something about going fast with your friends and doing all sorts of curves and stuff like that, going in the, in the woods and, and, and going over jumps and ramps. So much fun doing those things. And, and at the end of our street, we had this really steep hill. And I love going down that hill so fast. The, the wind just blowing through my hair back then. We didn't have to wear helmets. There were no such things as helmets when I was a kid, um, for the most part, on bikes. And, but the wind would just go through it, and you'd go down so fast down that hill. Just love going down that hill. I hated to go back up it, though. It was, it was no fun. But as I did so many things with my friends on the bikes, we... Uh, uh, one thing I, I really learned how to do really well was ride with mo no hands. Can you do that? Ride with your, no hands, just bike along riding with no hands. I, I could go down my street and up my street biking with no hands. One day I was going over to my friend Chris's house. He was just a couple of houses down, and I decided to ride my bike over there. We were going to meet up, and, and I went over there. And, and as I'm going, my, I, I decided to do my stunt of no hands. And as I'm going, biking along really fast, all of a sudden, my handlebars turn perpendicular <laughs> to my back tire. And I went flying over my handlebars. And I tore up my hands. And I tore up my knees. And blood was pouring out. And I cried. And I cried. And I cried, like it just ground into the pavement. It, it hurt so much. We didn't have elbow pads or hand pads back then either. I didn't hit my head. And then I took my bike. I went home crying. My mom nursed me back to health. I, it was probably a few days, a number of days, before I even tried to get back on my bike. Because I was hurt so badly. I had some band-aids and... And other things, I didn't need stitches, thankfully. I still have scars from that. And as, as, I, as I was preparing for that, I, to get back on my bike, I didn't want to. I, I was so nervous. I, I had lots of anxiety. I, I wondered if things would ever get back to be the, the way that they used to be when I rode my bike. Ever get that way in life? Where, when, where everything just seems so much fun, so normal and natural, and then all of a sudden this change happens. <laughs> you flip off the handle, off your, your bike, and you get all scraped up. Um, you, you now have a certain anxiety, a certain fear. Uh, things that used to come naturally, you go, how did I do this before? I'm nervous about this. I worked in a job when I was 19 years old, and there was a guy that I worked with who was middle-aged at that time, probably my age or younger. And, um, but I was 19 years old, and I got a phone call saying, hey, uh, so-and-so's not going to be at work today. I said, is he okay? He was a good worker. They said, yeah, he's okay, but he's going to be off for a little while. He's struggling with anxiety. I said, what? He's feeling okay? He doesn't want to come to work? He's scared to come to work? He struggled with anxiety. And he, he just woke up one day with this severe anxiety and could not face his job. COVID, when it hit, it brought many fears and anxieties. 
we're told to stay inside, don't be around people, people are getting sick, people were dying. And our normal routines of life started, uh, went out of whack. We avoided crowds. And, and there was so much hesitation even now for us to get together and, and get back to the way things used to be. The world has also changed during that time. Much more radical new political agendas are, are being pushed down in Canada. Those challenges bring anxiety. Uh, if you use the wrong words with the wrong people, you'll be in trouble because you don't want to offend anyone, but so many people are quickly offended these days. Climate change alarms are out there and people are pulling these alarms all the time. Every single weather pattern is, is highlighted and, it's, and we're told that we're coming on disaster once again. And yet last year, school buses were canceled the day before school because a, a storm was coming in. Lots of anxiety about that, but no storm really came. The fear of war in Europe. The fear of our economy collapsing. The fear of what others might think of me. The th fear of not measuring up. And, and the news media has highlighted a lot of these fears and a lot of these anxieties, and they're pushing them at us. And I think for most of us, our anxiety level has been turned up a fair bit. And I think all of us face aspects of that. And today is Thanksgiving. And you're saying, Pastor John, why are you talking about fear and anxiety on Thanksgiving weekend? Partly because it's been highlighted for us lately. But more importantly, the Bible talks about how to deal with anxiety. And one major aspect that we need to have in our lives in dealing with anxiety is Thanksgiving. Now, I'm not talking about eating turkey with your family on a certain weekend. I'm talking about an attitude of thanksgiving. And so I just want us to look at just a couple of verses today about what the Bible says about thanksgiving here. Probably a verse that many of us have memorized is Philippians 4, 6, which says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So let's just park here for a bit. I, I think too often people focus on do not be anxious. You read this and you say, oh, I'm struggling with some anxiety here. I'm anxious. And, and then you say, and it says, but do not be anxious. <laughs> oh no, I, I must be sinning then. Uh, no, you're not sinning if you're anxious. That's, that's not the reason why it says do not be anxious. He says, do not be anxious because all of us are prone to some type of anxiety. We are. We, we get anxious about so many things out there. Starting a new school year, starting a new job, meeting someone first time for a date, a, a job review, an exam, getting pulled over by the police, a, a letter from the Canadian Revenue Agency that you weren't expecting, medical tests by the doctor, driving on a busy, busy road. We all get anxious. Some people have more anxiety in their makeup, in their genes, you know, mom and dad, they were much more, they were anxious people and it was kind of passed down to you. But, and, and there are others who have some significant anxiety in their lives because of some type of trauma in their past and, and sometimes from a childhood experience. And they feel major guilt, major anxiety, sometimes major depression because of what has been done. And sometimes those people need some significant counseling just to help things, those things through. But the fact is, all of us struggle at one point in our life with some type of anxiety. And the Philippians, who this verse was written to, they probably struggled with where their next meal's coming from. They, they were probably anxious because somebody in the church that week was hauled off to prison because they were a believer in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul's writing this from prison. And he's saying, hey, don't be anxious. Even Jesus was anxious as he, went to the, as he was in the garden just before he went to the cross. And so what it says, when anxiety comes, don't be anxious. Don't dwell on it. 
In, in these times of, when we become anxious, this is what it says. It says, but in every situation by prayer and petition. Okay, it says, by every situation by prayer and petition. Basically, call on Jesus. Okay, pray to him. Bring him your troubles. Bring him what's going on in your life. Bring him those, those challenges that you're facing. Lord, I'm, I'm scared about this. Lord, this, this is in front of me. Lord, I'm, I'm a little bit upset about this. This is what's going on in my life. Petition him. This is happening. This is happening. This is happening. And then that also says, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Also within this prayer, put in some thanksgiving. What? What? Why? Why bring in thanksgiving when, when you're all nervous and upset? The Apostle Paul, guided by the Holy Spirit, is telling us to do something that does not come naturally. Bring in thanksgiving. Think of all the blessings God has given to you in the past. Think about just the place that you are at today. Just think about that for a minute. God has brought you to this place today. And think about all the good things he has done in the past. How he has provided for you, provided for you, provided for for you. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Just give thanks. Pastor David shared Psalm 147. It's a psalm of gratitude that the Israelites wrote to God about what God had done in the past. When there were insurmountable odds against them, when, when they, they were so weak, when they were so down, when, they, when there were such huge challenges and big things in front of them, God came through. God came through. Thanksgiving is reminding us that we're not in control. <laughs> the good things that have happened to your, in your life, did they come because you did them? No, it's usually because God has allowed them to happen in your life. The holiday uh, of Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving when it was first practiced, basically the pilgrims said to God, God, we planted this food. God, we raised these animals. But God, you provided the harvest. You provided the harvest. We didn't bring the rain. We, We didn't bring the heat that helped these plants grow. Thanksgiving shows that you're not in control. Very little things that you do, do you have control over. Jesus says in Matthew 25, he says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry. Don't become anxious. Worry and anxiety are basically the same thing. Don't even worry about even important things like food and clothing, Jesus says. In, in a similar way, in a way, he kind of says, look for things to be thankful for. Look at the birds of the air. Look, look how beautiful and graceful they are. And they don't even sow seeds. They don't even reap. They, but God provides for them. Or, or take a look at the wildflowers. Take a look at the beauty of creation, the beautiful flowers. I don't know if I've ever seen an ugly flower. Have you seen an ugly flower other than a dead flower? But, but flowers are beautiful. And we love, many of you love getting beautiful flowers. How do they happen? God God planted them. If God cares for that, and and, and they're here today, and they bring some beauty for a little while, and then they're gone tomorrow, how much more does he care for us? And then he goes on within that passage, and it's a good passage to dwell on Matthew chapter 6, but... Verse 27, uh, or sorry, verse 25 says, um, <coughs> Can any one of you add a single hour to your life? Can any of you add a single hour to your life by worrying? The answer is no. So, what should we do? Put it in God's hands. Put it in God's hands. For instance, last week in Florida, Hurricane Ian came to destroy much of that state. And how would you put this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. How do you put that into practice? Let's just say this practically with Hurricane Ian barreling down if you lived in in Florida at that time. Well, 
you would probably start praying, God, I'm a little bit anxious about this. There's this hurricane coming towards my house for me and my family. And God, this hurricane takes people's lives. And God, I, I'm nervous. What should I do about this? What should I do? God, this, this, this hurricane, it's big, it's powerful. It takes people's lives. It's destructive. But he says, then practice thanksgiving. God, Florida has been hit many times with hurricanes. And thank you for the experiences that we've learned from dealing with those hurricanes in the past. God, thank you for the authorities that are warning us about this. Thank you for the ways that you have provided for us to not get hurt during these things. Thank you for the wisdom you have given us in the past. And as you say these words of thanksgiving, maybe that will calm your heart as you go seek some shelter in the right place. And, and then you just focus in on God during that time. This verse goes on, says this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. Okay. It, it, why does giving thanks in tough times when I'm anxious, when I'm struggling, and, and seeking after God, why does that bring the peace of God? Because hey, we're not exactly sure. It transcends all understanding. And this peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Many of you over the years have shared with me the huge challenges that you have been through. And you prayed. And you sought after God. And, and you saw God's hand in your life even along the way. And others prayed for you in the midst of these, uh, in the midst of treatments, in the midst of griefs, in, in the midst of pain. And many of you told me, even in the midst of those times, there was a, a peace that passed all understanding. Oh, it was tough. It was tough to go through these things. But there was a peace that passes all understanding that you had. Because your mind was fixed on the one who's in control of it all. And is still in control of it all. One other passage I just want to end off with is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 14 through 18. Uh, the Apostle Paul says this to the Corinth, uh, Corinthian church. He says, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. He says, all this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. So the Apostle Paul is saying, hey, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And, and this is all for your benefit, Okay. And, and, and lives are being transformed because of that. It's because of the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ coming to this earth and, and, and giving us victory over death and giving us eternal life. And so you see this attitude of thanksgiving. So let's, let's let this thanksgiving overflow because Christ is in control. And he has a plan for all believers to raise them to life again. Thanking that Jesus came to finish the task that he set out to do, conquering sin and rising, uh, and, and conquering death and rising again. But we just don't stay in the past. This passage just goes on and says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Reality is, outwardly, we are wasting away. Each one of us are getting older every day. Okay? But inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. It says, therefore, uh, we do not lose heart. Our light and momentary troubles in eternity all our troubles are light and momentary. <laughs> Think about it. In eternity, it's eternal. In eternity, if, if you're sick for a little while, how long is that for? A few months, a couple days, a couple years. In eternity, that's nothing. Cancer, job loss, and addiction. Compared to eternity, they're, they're light and, and momentary troubles. Marital issues. Whatever type of trouble comes in your life, 
climate change, world financial collapse, World War III, okay? Uh, light and momentary troubles. In view of eternity, what is really a mega heavy trial? In view of eternity, what is one? He says, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. What is seen is so temporary. What is unseen is eternal, and that's Jesus Christ, who has given us a great way to him. And we're just told to look to him. And in a few moments, we're just going to take some time to remember what Christ has done so we can give thanks to him uh, for, for the great gift he has given to us. Those of you who are believers in Jesus Christ, we don't need to live a life of stress and anxiety because we know that he has given us victory. He was the first person to rise from the dead on his own, and, and he will take others with him, those who are in him. You see, Jesus did not come just for the good times, although he brings good times. He came for the bad times, to help us with the bad times. And so those who are in Christ Jesus, there was a hope when everything seems hopeless. And there was a joy when everything just seems so sad. There was a peace when the hurricanes of life come raging at you. If you don't have Christ, what's getting you through? If you don't have Jesus Christ, what's getting you through? You can't make it to eternity on your own. How will you do it? Through Muhammad? Uh, Muhammad can't give you eternity. What about Buddha and the meditational practices that he, he provides? He didn't say he can get you into eternity. Uh, only Jesus Christ is the one who could help. We need to receive his cleansing and forgiveness. Um, realize, realize that you can't do it on your own. Realize that Jesus Christ is the one that has bridged the gaps between humanity and eternity. He's paid the price for your sin. He's come to cleanse you from that sin. And if you put your faith and trust in him, he'll forgive you of that sin. And he'll give you eternal life. He'll help you through this life but we need to cast our cares on him. The thing is, we will live through momentary troubles. and Sometimes those troubles can be overwhelming. It takes discipline to take things to the Lord. It, it takes discipline and thought to be thankful. He cares for us. I started this little devotional about talking about my bike, bike accident when I was 10 years old. I was quite anxious about getting back on it. There, there were a few things that I did before I got on it. First of all, I, I straightened the handlebars because they were crooked, okay? I made sure they, they were straightened. And, um, but the thing that made me get back on was not necessarily me looking at the bike. It was more about me thinking about all the good times I had with my friends as I biked with them. And the thing that made me get on the bike was the fact that I can go faster from one place to another, and I really like doing that. I was thankful for the good times of the past, and so that's really what helped me to get back on that bike, to start pedaling once again. But the thing is, that was 40 years ago for me, over 40 years ago, and I still love riding my bike, and I ride it with a helmet now, but I don't ride with no hands anymore. I, I still hold on. It, it's changed me. I, I don't take the same risks as I used to. But I'm thankful that I still have that great experience to enjoy. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't be anxious about anything, but with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's such a big part of it. God has been so good in the past. And he cares for you today. Let's not be anxious about tomorrow. Let's just trust him today. And so with that in mind, with that in mind, we have two microphones up here. And I want to ask you, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Before we do that, let me pray. Lord, thank you for these passages that are so practical. And the fact is, we struggle with anxiety. 
We struggle with troubles that come into our lives. But you've told us to do some almost outlandish things. To bring them to you and to be thankful. Thank you, Lord, that we can just take this time to give testimonies of thanksgiving to you. And we do this with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So, what are you thankful for? We have two microphones up here. I encourage you to come on up and give your offering of thanks. This year's been a bit of a difficult year for my family, and, but God's been with us through it all. Through uh, some job situations, to uh, where I was in EI for a while, and it was like a moment last year around December, because of problems uh, with the EI, they had. Uh, sorry, it's standing up in front. <laughs> but anyways, they had. Uh, held payments because they had to fix their problem before they would release everything else. And so that took, oh, roughly three months. And so I was living off savings and it's dwindling and dwindling. And we got to December and I'm looking at the bills and I was like, I got enough to make it to the end of the month. And I'm looking at the credit card bill. It's like normally you pay in full. And it's like, do I pay it in full? And part of everything with God is, is trust. You have to trust me, you have to take that step of faith. And I remember, like, do I, you know, I can buy more time if I just do the minimum payment and, you know, use the credit to get you by and trust on our own means. And that was uh, tough. But I was like, no, it's not the right thing, the right way to go about it. And so I remember paying it in full. And I was supposed to get the payment by, you know, within a few weeks, but nothing's certain, you know, nothing is tangible in that respect. And like the next day, I got a phone call from a friend who I hadn't seen in years. But he was on my mailing list for the, our Christmas letter, which we had gotten out on time for once. Yeah. And he was like, I had read about some things we'd gone through, and he's like, we have a fund in our budget that we use to support other Christians and such going through difficult times, and we want to give some of that to you. And it wasn't the amount, it was had nothing to do with the money. It was just that, that was an answer. The timing was crucial. Like, I had just done it. And, and then I'm getting that phone call. Which I honestly believe I wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't done what I had done. And it's just another story from my life where I've seen God's fingerprints over lots of things, and I honestly believe that he's, he's guided the ship. And, and what's those things? So you, you get some feedback. Because he often works you know, behind the scenes wanting you to just trust him. Just like you trust the captain of a ship to get you home or the pilot of the plane. And so, again, in the end, I got you know, the, all the back pay from EI that was owed to me, and I would have been fine anyways with, without it. Honestly, the money didn't really mean a thing to me in that sense. Um, it was the message. That's just one of many things. It's been tumultuous year uh, with my daughter going through her heart surgery, and that went fantastic, and uh, my in-laws having a car accident back on Father's Day, and they're all doing well again and and uh, and then now we're going through uh, 
you know, the pregnancy, and I know with my wife especially, there's a lot of anxiety there because our last one was a miscarriage, a missed miscarriage, which is even harder. And so, and I don't know where tomorrow's going, but I just know he'll be there, and uh, there's nothing to do with me in some respects. So. Continue to pray for Danielle and her challenges, but thank you for sharing today. Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With all my heart I will praise my, his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives my sins and heals my diseases, redeems me and crowns me with love and tender mercies. <clears throat> this psalm goes on and on about all the things that he has done for us. And I hope that you might take time during this Thanksgiving weekend to read Psalm 103, which the pastor had us read at the retreat last week. Um, we are to tell others about God's greatness and the salvation that he offers. And I'm here today to tell you how God answered my prayers this summer and <clears throat> fall, very specifically regarding Ken, when he was so ill for two weeks at home and then eight days in the hospital. I came to realize, because he was so sick, I thought we were going to lose him, that I just had to release Ken to God and to say, your will be done. He's yours, Lord. And I just cried out to him, he's yours. I give him to you to do your will. And if you take him, I know that he'll be with you. And so I thank you. And if you give him back to me and our family for whatever time you give us, we will thank you and praise you for this special gift. So I was anxious. I was tired out. And then on top of that, I got COVID. And so I was in one room and he was in another. And dear Melody, our daughter, came and isolated with us and looked after us for 16 days. Anyway, um, that was a real blessing from God. And... Um, I was anxious, but God, when I prayed that prayer, God gave me such peace, peace that passes understanding, just like the pastor's talking about this morning. And I was able to go to sleep and sleep peacefully, uh, knowing that Ken was in God's arms and so was I. And God was so merciful, and he's restored Ken from the doors of death and given him back to us for the present and we are so thankful we just want to shout out with praise and thanksgiving to our lord for what he has done and praise hope you'll praise him with us today as a family as we're here just this is the first time we've been out to church since july because of this illness and so we're just so thankful Good morning. It's good to be back. Carol and I have missed our, our Sunday services. We've watched them a lot on TV, but it's good to get back. You know, we, we look out the window and we see the beautiful leaves on the trees. I don't know if you've been around. We were up, up around uh, just north of here and it's just beautiful. And people say there's no God. How can they do that? It's just, uh, I, I know I, m I mentioned this at, a, at the Norland Bapt Baptist Church. I had gave a little spiel on this and uh, it was, um, you know, it, it, it means a lot to, uh, 
to, to see this beautiful. And, and God has done all this. But what, what, I, what I want to say is it's been almost three years to the day when we had our car accident. And uh, we've had a few other falls and problems over the past three years. But you know, God is good. Uh, when, when things happen, sometimes we question God and say, why is this happening to me? But you know, God ha lets these things happen for a reason. I've, I've, I've told John this year, over the past, over the past three years, I've had an opportunity to bring, take, bring the gospel to uh, nine different people, uh, in, right from a nurse at the hospital to a PSW who I have now, who's a wonderful Christian girl. And uh, it, it's just so, so perfect the way God has let this, let this play out. And you know, I also want to thank everybody that helped us out during this time. Uh, it's just wonderful to have wonderful people like this who will come out. We've had a lot of dinners delivered to us over the, that period of time, been driven a lot of places. And uh, so, so God is good. And uh, I, I, I look back, and uh, I'm not angry. I was at first. I'm not angry anymore. And uh, it's just been over the past, probably the past three, four weeks, uh, I think that's about what it has been, that we have both felt very good. And so uh, I think we're on the right track. God bless you all. I'll see if I can get back better. <laughs> come on up to the mic if you'd like to speak. Don't raise your hand, just come on up. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roger Hutchinson. I'm married with four lovely children and a wife who is here with me today, first time for many, many months. On March the 4th, 2019, my wife was admitted to a nursing home because of Alzheimer's. And life has been very challenging ever since. But thanks uh, for God's word for sustaining me and for uh, very supportive children who has helped us uh, tremendously during this time. I'm going to bring this back. Twitching my head around here. So, uh, Hutchinson's are long-winded, but I'll keep this short. <clears throat> July the 5th of this year, my wife was declared uh, positive with COVID, so was I. I never had anything happen to me. I was fine. We both been vaccinated and no issues for me. But within uh, a couple hours after they called me, they called me again and said she's not doing very well. Um, I tested myself at home and I tested uh, uh, negative. But when I went to the nursing home, they tested me and I tested positive there. Anyhow, within a couple hours, they had declared my wife palliative. Of course, that set in motion lots of anxiousness, of course. And uh, it's great that we have this great technology. Out comes the cell phone, text messages to all four kids. I had them on the multiple um, text messages. So text them, your mom's not doing well. She declared uh, palliative, uh, you better come. Anyhow, within a short while, uh, the, well, one daughter wasn't able to get there till the next day, but my son came right away, Sarah, who's with, with me today was next, and then my oldest daughter, Barbara, in Alberta, came next. But through all this, uh, God was uh, gracious to us, uh, gave me a certain calmness. You know, one of the thoughts I had in my mind, you know, this is a win-win situation. If she stays with me, I win. Our kids win. If she goes, God takes her home, we still win. We know where she's going. She's going to be in a better place. But within uh, a few hours, uh, I, I sent out a message to Pastor David here to put her on the prayer chain. Thanks to those who uh, prayed for her. Uh, I called a couple of my friends who I could think of 
right away and asked him for a prayer for Elizabeth. Um, so the short story is that all happened uh, early afternoon on that day. By 5 o'clock the next morning, uh, she woke up and started talking and then never quit talking. But basically the nurses all left me alone in the room and, and first Sarah and I did, well Stephen and I was there first and Sarah and I, then Barbara and I did shift. They don't allow two in the room. And we kept talking to her, and Elizabeth always had this old saying when she was sick or surgery or whatever, oh, I'm a tough old bird, I'll get by this, I'm a tough old bird. So I kept repeating this to her, come on, honey, and I would stroke her arm there, come on, you're a tough old bird, you're going to get through this, you're going to get through this. But all in all, it's a miracle to me, and, and God's still in the business of doing miracles today, which I'm really grateful for. for. And um, and. Um, She's still doing reasonably well, uh, but uh, progressing slightly um, with her Alzheimer's. But I'm thankful she's still with me here and here today, and uh, for a great family for their support. Thanks, Roger. I'm thankful to you for being such a role model of faithfulness to your wife. So, thank you for that, Aquilo. Thank you, Pastor John. Um, a year ago, a year ago, I was diagnosed with a serious um, uh, health issue on top of uh, other um, health issues. And I can uh, stand here today and say, you know, how gracious and how good God is, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, doctors don't know, like, how long I'm going to live and so on and so forth. And so I spent a lot of time thinking about death this past year. Um, but I'm thankful for our church home, uh, strong leadership, uh, thankful for um, dear friends, old and new, uh, for the freedom that we uh, enjoy here in Canada. Um, most of all, that there was a day in history where um, God saved me uh, and for his miracles, um, my wife and I have a lovely home to live in, um, a late model vehicle. Uh, life is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? It doesn't have to be a long story. Like, it could be a short, short sentence. It's okay. Um, so I have a short sentence. I'm really grateful because God has provided me so much joy um, in giving me a relationship with Jesus. And like, his love is like so constant that like no matter what you're going through, like, he's always like faithful to us and like saves us and supports us as we go through life. And it's just really, God is just really, really, really wonderful. Yeah. Praise God, Emily. Thank you for sharing. That's it? Oh. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to pressure you. <laughs> if I can get through it. <laughs> um, two things in a nutshell. And first is thank you for all the support during my mom. And the other thing is how gracious God is through all that. She lived with us for roughly four months before... Um, cancer took her in January in 11 days, which was amazing because it could have been six months to a year of going through hard stuff. God spared her for that. But prior to that, I was, okay, God, we knew Alzheimer's was kind of setting in a bit. So my prayer was like, okay, God, Alzheimer's, you know, really Alzheimer's. Next thing I know, literally days later, she was diagnosed with the cancer and uh, which was out of the blue. She was healthy up till then. So to me, that's a blessing because as everyone knows, Alzheimer's is just nasty. And we were spared that. And again, I never did officially thank the church family for all the letters, cards, phone calls, meals, throughout all of it. Um, and the other thing is, when I did my ECE and EA years ago, the first thing I went to was Christian Heritage School and they didn't need EAs back then, didn't have the EC back then, but that's where I wanted to be. I'm finally there after, I don't know, 15 years onward, I can't, I've lost track. I was at the daycare, 
and I had to leave there for arthritis, and um, it's still there, it's still doing its thing, but God's been so good with helping me deal with, um, it's just osteo, so it's wear and tear, it is what it is, but I am finally at Heritage Christian School as an EA in the kindergarten room in grade one, which I absolutely love in the morning, and I'm also privileged to be able to help open up an after-school program um, three till six starting Tuesday. So I'm hoping and praying that I can do this and energy level wise. But again, God is being good through all losing other things, but bringing so much blessings also. And throughout life, it's just what it is. Thank so, the Lord. God is good. Thank it's good. you. It's good. It's good. Last call. I am very thankful this year because we've had struggles in our family and God has been faithful. I'm thankful for the ladies uh, Monday mornings who faithfully come and pray for my family. And I just, you know, it's just been a wonderful year because even though we've struggled, I know that my family has looked to God for his protection, for his salvation, and for everything that they have provided, that God has provided for them. And we are just all truly thankful for that. I am so glad you're able to join us today in worship. If you have a need, a prayer request, feel free to reach out to us at the church here. You can give us a call or you can also email us. God bless you.